Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Horror Mine. My name is Vic Shai, and this is The Scare Score, where I break down horror movies and rate them on how scary I think they are. In this episode, I'll be going over the 2008 Australian mockumentary horror film, Lake Mungo. I'll be going over the events that take place throughout the film while breaking down each scare scene and rating them on how scary they are or attempt to be. Lake Mungo has been called one of the scariest films of all time, and others have called it extremely boring. But but how scary is it? Let's find out as we explore Lake Mungo and tally up the scare score. Our movie begins with a somber narration from an unknown character who says something bad is about to happen to her. It hasn't reached me yet, but it's on its way. We hear different voices quoting phrases taken from different parts of the film. The visuals are of old creepy pictures that captured possible ghost encounters. We then see a picture of the family being followed by a documentary crew called The Palmers, consisting of Russell, June, and their son Matthew. They live in the small Australian town of Ararat and are the subjects of a tragedy that puts their family and the town in the media spotlight. This is a well-crafted intro that immediately creates a sense of dread and mystery that is felt through throughout the whole film. On December 21st, 2005, June Palmer placed a distressing call to emergency services, stating that her 16-year-old daughter, Alice Palmer, had just gone missing at the Norval Dam. The police quickly dispatched a search and dive team to go look for Alice. The Palmers recount the moment they noticed Alice wasn't there and how strange everything felt. The crew interview a family friend, Georgie Ritter, and June's parents, Garrett and Iris Long. The tone is absolutely depressing and it feels this way throughout the entire film. Worst night of our lives. We hear from Alice's boyfriend Jason and her best friend Kim, who are both in disbelief about what happened. Russell said that he keeps the porch light on just in case Alice comes home. The acting by everyone involved feels real and genuine, which really helps create a feeling of authenticity. I quickly started to care about the Palmers and their situation. Alice Palmer's body was recovered from the dam on December 24th at 9.25 p.m. Her parents were called to identify Alice, but only Russell looked at the body. June stayed in the car as she didn't want to remember her daughter that way. We briefly see pictures of Alice's body which look absolutely horrifying. Despite not having seen Alice other than a few homemade videos, seeing her in that state was very effective. It's the sort of disturbing imagery that really imprints itself onto the mind, especially given the authenticity of the presentation. After the discovery of Alice's body and her funeral, there is a slight shift in tone that becomes darker than it already was. Russell describes strange things that started happening in the house, especially coming from Alice's room. There was just something weird about that house. There is an eerie feel to hearing him describe what's happening as opposed to seeing it directly. It's a bold choice that ultimately pays off and makes this film as unique as it is. June talks about terrifying nightmares she's been having about Alice. She describes Alice walking into the house completely drenched and staring at them from the edge of the bed. Her nightmares became so bad that she would go out on nightly walks to avoid going to sleep. She went as far as to go into people's houses to feel like she was living someone else's life. Very weird, but it was interesting seeing each family member grieve in their own way. Russell started working a lot more, which concerned his boss. But, you know, I, I just wanted to get on with it. He then describes the film's first possible ghost encounter. He details hearing a noise coming from Alice's room, then seeing her walk in. Alice didn't seem to notice him at first, and the next words he says are chilling. I knew then that she knew I was there. Alice turned around and yelled at him to get out. Russell was telling the story so vividly that I could almost picture it. The encounter not only terrified Russell, but broke him emotionally. His words alone created a tense atmosphere, and it's all thanks to the brilliant acting. Matthew began spending a lot more time alone and developed some unusual bruises on his body. The doctor couldn't determine the cause of the bruises, and they eventually disappeared. Matthew became passionate about photography and took a photo of their backyard that captured something troubling. It would appear that uh, Alice is standing 
against the fence. This eerie photo comes with a couple of twists that make this film a lot scarier upon rewatch. Sometime later, a man named Bob took a photo at the dam that also appeared to have Alice in it. Seeing those photos of Alice with her face blurred sort of gave me chills. The photos of Alice made June believe that there was a chance that she may still be alive and that Russell may have made a mistake. Although Russell knew Alice was dead, he himself started to have doubts. Alice's body was exhumed and DNA evidence confirmed that she was in fact dead. Several pictures and videos are shown which felt like a punch to the gut at this point. Because he kept hearing noises, Matthew set up a camera to see if he could capture anything. He captures footage of a shadowy figure moving the very first night. The ghostly encounters in this film are decently spread out, but that's actually a good thing. They each feel significant and have a huge impact on the story. They are also crafted very well. There is just the right amount of buildup created right before each reveal that makes each one so unsettling. We then meet a psychic named Ray, whom June has been listening to over the radio. Ray seems like a chill dude, but his motives and actual psychic abilities are pretty unclear. Thanks, Ray. Let's see you, Annie. We see him interact with a woman named Annie and hear him quietly tell her that she's going to die. June quickly takes a liking to Ray and has her first consultation with him on June 15th, 2006. Ray places her in a trance and records the entire thing, which he does with all of his clients. While in a trance, he has her picture walking through the house. She pictures herself going into Alice's room and sees her sitting in a chair at the end of the bed. This is an unsettling scene that sort of diverts the viewer's expectation. A typical horror film might have crafted this scene the same way, but would have most likely revealed a jump scare or something lurking. According to June, she did see Alice, but described her as being sad. This really got me thinking about whether she actually saw Alice's spirit or just made those things up in her mind. A question that is never truly made clear, as again, most of the film is described to us by the characters themselves. It creates a unique kind of scary that I haven't seen in horror movies before. The type of fear you might feel when someone like a friend tells you about an encounter they had with a ghost. You're not sure if you should believe them, but hearing their personal story and seeing their emotions about it is what makes it scary. Russell was skeptical about Ray at first, but Matthew talked him into having a seance. Other than Ray feeling a strong presence in the house, the family felt the seance didn't really accomplish anything. Matthew's video footage of Alice lurking in the shadow proved otherwise. Russell describes my feelings about the scare scene perfectly. This felt different compared to the previous Alice sightings. This footage somehow felt more sinister and Alice's presence appears scarier and unsettling. There was something inexplicable in our house. Following the disturbing footage, Ray and Matthew set up several more cameras around the house. During this time, the neighbors and even the police were skeptical about Ray's involvement with the Palmers. The cameras capture two additional sightings of Alice. The scare scene isn't as effective as the other ones as it comes right after the seance scene. Still effective, but it just shows that having your scares further apart can be a huge benefit, though this is clearly meant to show that the paranormal activity is starting to ramp up. A video is then released by a couple named Kathy and Doug Withers, who recorded themselves at the dam on April 3rd, 2006, the same day that Bob took his photo with Alice in it. In their video, Matthew can be seen walking in the background. Matthew says he was walking around wearing Alice's jacket and was trying to avoid being in Bob's photos. This incident prompted Russell to question Matthew, who revealed that all the previous ghost encounters of Alice had been fake. Everything you've seen is a lie! You son of a bitch. Matthew then explains how he doctored the videos and photos. He faked the evidence so that they could have a reason to exhume Alice's body and confirm it was actually her. Although, all the fake video footage after Ray's involvement happened after Alice's identity was already confirmed. This may have been Matthew's own twisted way of dealing with the death of his sister, who he was really close to. It may have given him comfort to try and make the family feel like Alice's presence was still there. This made things a lot harder for his parents, especially June, who wasn't ready to let go of Alice. While this puts everything we've just seen into question, it doesn't make it any less scary or impactful. As a matter of fact, the reveal at the end makes it all even more terrifying. We learn more about June and Alice's relationship when June admits she wasn't as close with her daughter as she'd like. June's mother Iris also admits to having that issue with June, which she herself may have gotten from her own mom. It's a really interesting scene that shows how impactful the death of a loved one can be. They are reflecting on generations' 
worth of family interactions and how those dynamics may have impacted them, something that I'll never be able to experience myself. Matthew goes on a three-day road trip with Ray, which makes him realize how much he misses his sister. While he was away, the cameras captured images of Alice that Matthew couldn't have faked. Alice's ghost. Learning that all the previous ghost encounters were fake and finally seeing a real one was really effective. This picture of Alice looks especially creepy and menacing. June reviews Matthew's old footage and sees another figure hiding in the dark. She recognizes the figure as their neighbor, Brett Toohey. She looks into Alice's safe and finds a videotape with shocking footage that explains why Brett broke into their home. Alice would often babysit for the Tooheys, which led to her having sexual relations with Brett and his wife. One of those instances was recorded on on the tape, which is why Brett was looking for it. The Tuohys sold their house and moved six months after Alice's death. Russell feels like the Tuohys had a part to play in Alice's death. He believes what happened between them was the reason she was so distant from her own family. The police went searching for the Tuohys, but just like my dad, they were never found. They ask her boyfriend Jason how he feels about everything. Imagine learning that your dead girlfriend was cheating on you with her neighbor twice your age from a documentary that's going to be shown to the entire world. The tape's discovery makes every everyone that was close to Alice feel like they didn't really know her at all. She kept the fact she kept secrets a secret. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock! June then finds one of Ray's business cards inside of Alice's journal. This reveals that Alice sought Ray for help several months before her death. We see her first consultation with Ray where she talks to him about strange dreams she's had. It feels a bit surreal seeing her speak to Ray as we haven't really heard her talk up to this point. And my room's in the back part of the house as you go towards the kitchen. Ray never told the Palmers about Alice coming to see him because she didn't want them to know. He feels he wouldn't have been able to help them if they knew she had come to see him. Ray also feels that the Palmers blame him for not being able to predict Alice's death. The Palmers felt that they could no longer trust him, especially Matthew, who had gotten really close to him. June reads one of Alice's journal entries seven months before her death detailing one of her nightmares. She describes feeling cold, wet, and heavy like she'd been drugged. She woke up, but the feelings didn't go away. She went into her parents' bedroom and watched them from the edge of the bed, feeling extremely sad. June breaks down in tears reading this, realizing that Alice described the same exact dream she had, but from her own perspective. And just stand at the foot of our bed, just staring at us. I started to cry standing there at the foot of the bed. We then learn of a school trip that Alice took to Lake Mungo just months before her death. Jason then shows June video footage from his sister's cell phone that was taken during the trip. In the footage, Alice can be seen kneeling under a tree burying something. When questioned about that night, Kim said that Alice was visibly upset but that she didn't know why. This leads the family to Lake Mungo to hopefully find what secrets Alice may have buried there. The film has been very interesting up to this point. The presentation of the story combined with the few subtle scares have been a different kind of scary. The last 20 minutes of the film ramps things up quite a bit and even manages to make the first hour a lot scarier. They find the location where Alice buried her things, which contained some of her jewelry and her cell phone. The footage captured on her phone is highly unsettling and adds a whole new terrifying layer of context to everything we've seen up to this point. Having been recorded on a Nokia cell phone in 2005, the footage doesn't quite reach 4K 60fps but gets pretty darn close. The footage is extremely dark and grainy and is pretty hard to make out. While the footage plays out, we hear Alice saying she felt like something was coming for her. Something slowly approaches her in the dark and is not only terrifying, but also shocking. We realize that Alice came face to face with the image of her own death months before it actually happened. The entity in the footage looks exactly like Alice after her body was recovered from the water. Russell instantly recognized the disturbing sight from the footage as Alice, which leads to a horrifying jump scare. His body. Face. To those familiar with the scare score, jump scares don't typically score a lot of points because of their typically cheap and predictable nature, but this was an excellent jump scare that was set up incredibly thanks to the narrative. I was super engaged in the Palmers discovering what Alice buried. Learning that she literally saw the disturbing image of her own death was shocking. The film didn't have any jump scares up to this point, and nothing really stood out as in-your-face terrifying. These are what made this scare scene and jump scare so effective. The reaction to the footage from her parents is 
is interesting. Russell immediately recognized the face in the footage as Alice's dead body. Knowing that, he still didn't believe that Alice knew she was going to die. June, on the other hand, never got to see Alice's body after her death, but she was convinced that Alice knew that she was going to die. All the Palmers agree that Alice saw her own ghost, which is a really scary thought. June believes that Alice's spirit guided them to all their discoveries so that they could learn the truth. After Lake Mungo, the Palmers seemingly find peace and closure. Their life somewhat returned to normal, and they forgive Ray for what happened. Trying to move on from this dark chapter in their lives, the Palmers decide to move. We then see June's final consultation with Ray being played at the same time as Alice's. Similar to both their dreams, it appears that Alice and June saw each other while being in different moments in time. This possibly shows that they had a strong spiritual connection to each other that they knew nothing about. I don't think she knows I'm there. Alice isn't here. Believing Alice's spirit is finally gone, they pack up their belongings and leave the house. In the film's final scene, they take one last photo in front of the house, revealing Alice's spirit still inside as the movie ends. It's a chilling final shot because it shows that her spirit isn't at peace and leaves some unanswered questions. I like that there isn't a huge dramatic final reveal. It's just a picture of the Palmers who seem to have found peace who are unaware that Alice's spirit still lingers. In fact, the credits reveal that they were unaware of her actual presence the entire film. She also appears in the background of the Withers video at the dam. The most shocking reveal is that Alice's spirit appears in the photo that Matthew faked, meaning that her spirit was actually there the whole time. It's a brilliant twist that makes those previous scenes a lot creepier, and I'll retroactively tack on some points for each of them. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Lake Mungo. My friends, this was a unique horror film with a presentation I haven't quite seen before. This isn't your typical found footage horror film and definitely isn't for everybody. Some consider it one of the scariest films ever made and some find it outright boring. I understand both arguments and my opinion sort of falls in the middle. I think this is an excellently crafted horror film that is presented in a very unique way. The film has a very creepy atmosphere accompanied by a constant feeling of dread and sadness. The scare scenes in this film are few and far between but are subtle and really effective. The Palmers were never in any actual danger. The scare factor here comes from a totally different place than I'm used to. The scariest aspect of the film is that the family was experiencing a haunting that felt real. The acting and mockumentary style blended so well and felt really authentic. The most tragic thing about it all is that the entire film is essentially the Palmers dealing with their grief and trying to move on from this tragedy. By the end of the film, they have seemingly moved on which results in them leaving Alice's spirit all alone. The story is very engaging and the acting makes everything believable and scarier. It isn't the scariest film I've ever seen but it's definitely unique and brilliantly crafted, earning Lake Mungo a good scare score of 68%. The scariest scene in the film is by far Alice's cell phone recording. Discovering that Alice saw her own death and actually seeing it for ourselves was pretty shocking. The build up to the jump scare was done so well, making it one of the most effective jump scares I've ever seen. But as always, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Thank you all for tuning in and I cannot wait to see y'all right back here in the Horror Mine. Y'all stick around.